we were talking about Mortal Kombat 12 and how uh, NRS and WB have a huge, giant marketing team behind the clear and concise messaging they're trying to get out about their games, right? So the teasers do a great job of that. They do a pretty, a pretty decent job at letting the audience know what to expect about their games and present that information in a way that is like celebrated and is exciting. And then there's Harada. Uh, and you gotta love him, right? You gotta love Harada because he's been a part of this industry and has largely shaped its entire existence. This is the way they do, and this is what he does. Harada made several absolutely astronomical announcements about Tekken 8. Long story short, we were we were streaming some Tekken and shit over the weekend, offline Tekken, which was... And then he just started casually treat, tweeting the wildest shit, so dot, 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 and then Harada started tweeting. I don't even know what egg this on, but we're gonna go back and we're gonna dig into the archives and find out because he has said so much stuff about Tekken 8 that had not been announced over its entire existence. That is crazy. And Harada already says a lot about, a lot about development of games, which we pay attention to in Harada's bar. So there's already quite a bit of things that we've learned a lot about Japanese game development and we've learned a lot from uh, the game development by Bandai Namco from Harada's bar, which has been insanely educational that he's been doing this stuff. So, okay, let's go to tweet number one. And this is where my, my brain was essentially just losing it. Somebody asks, can we get crossplay Harada? Hey, Harada, can we get crossplay? And he's like, of course! Of course you can have crossplay. Yes, dumb bitch. Of course you'll have crossplay. Don't worry about it. With the previous generation consoles released, I had already proposed crossplay between the two platforms. However, at the time there were odds with each other over their mutual interests and P2P security issues and repeatedly refused. So Harada actually tried to in the past get crossplay enabled in like either Tekken or Soul Calibur or any of their other large variety of fighting games. Crossplay has now been confirmed for Tekken 8. And while it, you would like to think that that should be an absolute industry standard, it's felt like it's it should have been that way for the past five years, right? And not every single game has been receiving that kind of love, care, and attention. In fact, most fighting games that have come out over the past couple years have retroactively been adding crossplay to their titles, which has been great, but they're still in a process of even that happening right to a variety of successful attempts guilty gear strive we're still looking at you and we still do not even know between what's happening with with kof and even games like sam show are getting rollback but not actual crossplay, as i understand the same exact thing applies to dragon ball dragon ball retroactively getting rollback but we still don't know about crossplay. they haven't mentioned anything of that part why is this important is what harada is saying is true yes what, what he's saying is absolutely true. People be like, oh, you, why didn't you do it before? You know, oh, you son of a bitch. We should have this stuff. It should be, it should be standard. Crossplay was available on some games, very few, right? But ultimately Epic and Fortnite was really pushing crossplay crazy hard. And they wanted to make it working on everything. They wanted PC and all consoles to be crossplaying with each other. And there was only one member of the big video game room that did not want to, that did not want to cooperate regarding all this stuff. Uh, yeah, Rocket League can also be thanked for this as well. Sony kept saying that there's, uh, we are worried about the security of our users, pretty much blaming the security of other companies like Nintendo and, and PC and Microsoft, that their security isn't good enough for our platform and our online infrastructure. You know, fucking hilarious coming from them considering that there has been multiple instances of tens of millions of people getting their information leaked from fucking Sony. Hilarious, I think it's just personally the funniest thing in the world. An audacious claim that, hey, we can't just do crossplay, man. Like, there's security concerns? We can't just flip a switch. I'll get to the point. The next day, Epic Games, the creators of Fortnite, literally flipped the Switch. And everybody started realizing that for a couple days, Fortnite was working cross-play with everything and nobody understood it. People were like, what's going on here? Sony just said that you can't flip a Switch. Long story short, Epic was doing so well and they had so much tenure with now the biggest video game in the world and Sony wasn't playing ball, Epic essentially forced them to play ball. That's the end of this story. The reason we're here now is that now it's kind of standard. Sony's made that a thing that's okay. If developers do this, it's essentially a flip of a switch where the functionality is built in at the start and then they can just allow it to be so. So, fantastic. This is this is actually a first um, for Bandai Namco fighting games. 
Uh, it's about to be a first for uh, Street Fighter as a whole, outside of Street Fighter V, which had PC and PlayStation. Uh, it's going to be on everything for, for Street Fighter VI. Yeah, we're not going to be limited by the consoles we're on. And this is a substantially big deal for not just the future of these franchises, but for, a, for, for being more accommodating for new players. All this does is allow the player pools at lower levels to have more people to play with. And people at higher levels, although substantially lower, to have a significant boost in people that will be playing games in their longevity as, as years come. So this is such a big fucking deal that we're not gonna be isolated to just the PC version. We're not gonna be isolated to this. Giving players the option to play with some or not is gonna be a thing that should absolutely exist. You do not have to do it, but this is a big deal. And Harada just casually dropped it in a, uh, in a tweet of, of course we're doing that. Funny enough, another tweet. Remember when they announced they were open to crossplay a few years ago, but in reality, they didn't actively support third parties at the time and the hurdles were actually quite high. There are still some problems left, but it will be possible. And then it starts to get a little crazy. Um, I've explained it several times in the past, but I ignore people who uh, ask similar questions, so don't spam me. So he starts to get mad, right? Number one, Arata is now getting mad. Shut the hell up and go sit next to your parents and watch some Tekken on Netflix. All right. And then somebody asks him, but will there be rollback? <laughs> Already installed it. I did it myself. Bitch! I did it myself. Took six hours and a couple of Bud Lights. And it already has what you want! The reason why <laughs> we don't make big announcements like crossplay is because even if we make big announcements, people like you will only say things like, wow, that's normal in this day and age. So shut the hell up and shit the hell down! I'm gonna translate here. Just, just based on the history of how Harada is, is communicating this subject. This is referring to Tekken 7. This is not referring to the state of what Tekken 8 will be when it comes out. This is Tekken 7. The netcode present in Tekken 7 to the, uh, the rollback standards that Bandai Namco has adopted means that this is essentially what they are already doing will be an op more optimized version of what they have. I feel like that makes a lot of goddamn sense. Tekken 7 still has the problem where if you are playing the game and you're playing somebody that is far away, the input delay will get higher and higher and higher. It's a mix of rollback and delay, isn't it? Well, I mean, it is, but rollback netcode is, once again, Rollback netcode is delay-based netcode. When people are close to each other, you use delay-based netcode. You just do. Rollback kicks in when people are far away so that the match can actually be playable. That's, that is the point of rollback netcode, right? Functionality doesn't work the same way as what people are affirmed to rollback netcode's functionality being, right? The, the common usage of, of rollback is something I think different than what people are expecting? That's why I will say like, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, because I can barely match with anybody that isn't close to me in Tekken. The only people that gives me is people that are close to me. If you go from East Coast to West Coast in a game like Tekken, there could be quite a bit of input delay there. If not like moments of stuttering and things like that, right? There's no caked in rollback frames to eventually come in and fix those issues, right? Especially with like Wi-Fi and stuff like that, right? What I will say about Tekken is that what it's doing with its netcode with close range is really good because the netcode has changed a lot over the years. They actually have really good net play with, with Tekken 7, but you need you need people. You need, you need enough people locally to fight with. And some games are even bad at that. I don't know what this means for, for Tekken 8. Uh, for me, this translates as we are going to be getting something that most likely will function fairly similar to how Tekken 7's net play is currently. However, there is an outlier and the big question is, why is Arika helping out with Tekken 7 and Tekken 8? Outside of potentially just, you know, we're friends with them, they're helping us out on the development of the game. The biggest outlier here is the fact that Arika has retrofitted rollback into a quote-unquote 3D fighting game in some way, and apparently did it pretty damn good. I think that we still might get something regarding rollback in Tekken in the near future. We might be getting something regarding Arika's involvement. To me, this this doesn't come across as like, oh, they just, they made an announcement about, they, they casually announced rollback for Tekken. We just made a huge announcement 
Rollback is now in Tekken. Uh, no, he's saying that it's already been there. So uh, let's move forward, right? Casually announcing rollback, although we already had it, and uh, casually announcing crossplay, which is actually a new thing. Let's go up a little bit more. How many characters should we expect for Tekken 8 at launch? Man, Harada was spicy tonight. This is great. Um, I think it's a lot more than Capcom. Of course, character modeling, rigging, and costume design are all new assets, so it's hard work. That's why we're trying to increase the number of launches. And he's saying launches is in like character launches at start. This is also backed up from Markman, where in Evo Japan, Markman was able to communicate from an interview with Harada. You should be expecting a lot more characters than, than like a low ball 20 or something like that in Tekken 8. Likely be a bigger roster than you are expecting. And there's a reason that expectation exists. Tekken 7's vanilla version, which isn't even the 2017 version that came out, the arcade version had like something between 20, four-ish characters. And then by the time the game came out on console, it was in the mid thirties. This is good. Coming from several different directions, Street Fighter VI has 19 characters at launch. And it seemingly, Tekken's already been announced for 12 and we're gonna be getting even more announcements over the next year or so until the game comes out, who knows? Very healthy for a game with completely new assets like Tekken 8 to launch with more than 30 characters. I think a 30 character bet, even like later 20s, early 30s, 30 on the dot is pretty huge. I think that's a fairly decent chunk of characters. What I'm thinking is if we get anything over 30, it's a, it's a dream come true. If they do actually manage to hit the mid 30s in a launch huge budget game like Tekken 8 is, uh, that's insane. If we're expecting somewhere any, anywhere between 30 to 35, that is a massive la launch roster for a game as huge budget as Tekken. Definite good reason why the game won't be out for potentially around a year from now. There's a very good reason for that because it might have a huge roster and potentially a big story mode and a lot of single player content and all this shit, right? Outside of, outside of the actual online functionality of it all. This is interesting. Can we expect the weekend beta of Tekken 8? I mentioned to play with Lars. We are only doing closed alpha testing at each event. So please wait for the beta. Whoa. Oh my. That would be a very good thing to announce at an evolution tournament. That would be a very good thing to announce. There's a lot of really good news. Tekken's gonna have a bigger roster. They're likely gonna have a beta. It's gonna have rollback netcode of some kind. Similar to Tekken 7, most likely. Big asterisk, what is Arika working on? The first biggest one, in my opinion, is the fact that it's the, the first big Bandai Namco game. That's a fighting game that'll have crossplay. That's huge, man. That's a really, really, really big deal.